I've got a bloody question, guys, and that question is why? Why so much damn plastic? Literally, why so much plastic? Why does so much plastic get used? Um, since living back in England, when I go to the supermarkets, all I see is plastic everywhere. And what I think about is like, firstly, actually, I've become hyper aware of consumption um, and consumerism since coming back to the UK, like hyper aware. But one thing I notice so much these days is plastic. And I'm just like, what the hell? Why so much damn plastic? Um, you know, even even small things like being at my mum's and, and noticing, you know, how you get the plastic for, you know, your washing tablets come in plastic and then the spray bottles that you use plastic and and fruits and vegetables are wrapped in plastic. And, you know, like since, um, you know, I moved to Melbourne, actually, and, and they were pretty good with that. They didn't really wrap a lot of their fruits and vegetables in plastic. You pay per kilo. So every time I come back to England, I'm so shocked to see like a singular brock of hip a singular head of broccoli wrapped in plastic with a sticky label on it and then other ones next to it were not, not wrapped in plastic where you do it yourself. And it's like, I mean, you know, whatever. I'm sure there's reasons that they're wrapped in plastic, hygiene, transportation, whatever that might may be. But you have the option to not buy it in plastic and then the option to buy it in plastic. And it's always cheaper as well to not buy it in plastic. And it's it's just quite crazy. When you look at the price per kilo, it's such a huge difference. I, I saw like, it was like a two pound per kilo difference in zucchinis that were like unwrapped versus zucchinis that were wrapped in plastic. Um, or courgettes, whatever you want to call it. And I, I just, I can't believe the amount of plastic that is actually used. And, you know, I, I just feel like that is something that really could be worked on um, in the world. And it's quite funny. I have this funny story. There's, uh, you know, when I was like, I think I was maybe 20, 19 or 20, 21 even. Yeah, 20 into 21. And I was living with this group of people and they must have been literally legit woke as because... They were they were talking about some things and and that I was not really you know aware of then. But my angels blessed them. They were doing their best to sort of start giving me some signals and that. Um, you know, I was working with this PT and she started like you know talking to me about angel numbers and being like, if you see the times, all line up. These you know these are your angels. But I just thought, what the hell is she talking about? But okay, she'd message me like time and I was like, well I didn't see it, so you know whatever. And then as soon as I moved to Melbourne. It, it clicked. Something about moving to Melbourne for me triggered, like, you know, it was almost like the angels were saying, like, these things, these things, and giving me these little messages. But then when I moved to Melbourne, I, I flipped and, and actually opened, the, the spiritual gates opened for me, or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, a new level of awareness or something. And, um, yeah, I was living with these guys. One of them was a vegan, and I remember, I was a vegetarian at that point still, but she was vegan, and I just, I just remember, like, being in the fridge and being like, what? where's this fake meat? And she came and gave me this bar of soap one time. Like, somebody bought me this bar of soap, but it's made with goat's milk. Do you want it? And I was just like, yeah, okay. Like, I, I thought it was so weird. And um, now, obviously, I am sort of that person. But, um, yeah, they the boy that I lived with at one point came up to me in, in my came to my room and he was like, hey, hey, Holly, so we're trying to, you know, reduce plastic, reduce down, reduce plastic consumption whatever he was trying to say and um he was like so you know when you go to the supermarket maybe if you try buy your foods not in plastic and I just was like what like I was literally like mm, yeah I'm gonna keep buying my firstly I didn't like being told what to do I'm, I'm a bit funny like that and secondly yeah I was like right you can tell me I, I just didn't have the, the idea like I never thought about plastic and why I was buying my food in plastic. And and he told me this when I was 20. I'm 29 now, like, you know, come back to the UK and now I'm seeing like, whoa, what is all this plastic? Why are we using so much of it? Um, yeah, I've got quite passionate about consumerism since being here. It's really been sparked inside of me. Like I'm really passionate about conscious, being conscious about the things we consume in our consumption as humans and, and as humanity. But, um, but yeah, that was that's a funny story in my head because I like just just remembering him coming and saying that to me and me thinking it was so crazy and now being here and and even being here in previous years and noticing the plastic and being like what the hell, but um, but yeah that that was funny. But now, you know, like here's something that I'm doing personally. Um, I I a couple of things. For example, I use bars of soap. I I love bars of soap, but it's just you know I guess I don't know if the the processing 
you know, the, the, the manufacturing process is better or lesser good for the environment. Obviously, I would like to eventually find a company, somebody who's home making soaps and buy them off them or even learn to make my own soaps. But I get soap instead of shower gel because every time you buy a shower gel, you buy it in a bloody plastic bottle. You know, and you go through so much a month and where does it all go? Do you know what I mean? Where does it all go? If every single human being on the planet is doing that, where's it all going? Every time I noticed the spray bottles in my mum's house, I was like, mum, why, why are you buying two more spray bottles? You know, you still got two at home. You know, like you still got two that are unfinished at home. She's like, yeah, but I need these two. And I'm like, you know, you should just buy a big bottle and then refill your, your singular one or the ones that you've got at home. So I, I've done that. I, I got this bottle because I like this bottle. I can peel the labels off and have it plain. Um, this is already like a non-toxic one. Obviously, I believe in that. The ble bleaches and stuff really irritate me. So get one that is as friendly for me as possible. And then I bought this. And literally, I'm just gonna refill it with this. And hopefully this works. Hopefully this as a product is, is cool. Um, obviously I've dabbled before with making my own cleaning products. You know, right now it's not the time that I want to focus on doing that, but I do want to be as, as aware of my consumption as possible, especially when it comes to plastic especially when it comes to plastic and, and wastage and not wasting things and, and, and almost taking things for granted and just buying things because, and actually just buying things because I need them as opposed to because I want them. But yeah, this plastic thing has been a huge sort of um, thing that I've noticed since, since being back here and consumerism as a whole, you know, what we're consuming, listening to music. And that's, that's something I'm very passionate about that I've found out actually, you know, that is, that is sparking a lot of passion in me. Um, what we're listening to, what we're watching, what we're eating, what we're buying, you know, what we're seeing on social media. Like I've just become hyper aware of the consumption of humanity as a whole and humanity as an organism. And if, if we can like work on our consumption, we can, you know, if that's the singular thing that we work on consumption, we can probably change a lot to be fair. Um, and that is, that is kind of like what I'm what I'm seeing a lot, but plastic, it's a big thing and there's just so much of it being used and um, yeah, it's quite crazy. The consumption here in England is massive, uh, massive. So yeah, that's one of my observations and um, they're some of the things that I'm trying to do to reduce my uses of plastic. I'm using Facebook Marketplace so much to try and, you know, not buy new things to to find old finds and and actually you know pick up things cheaper and reuse what's going on in the world so uh, w or what's already been made in the world you know what i mean and a lot of the times you find better things anyway because you know some of them are handmade as opposed to factory and belt made which you know just mass production crazy mass production is crazy you know um but yeah, that's that's sort of me. That's what I'm doing. I'm noticing the plastic. Guys, if you notice plastic, comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're doing to improve your um, impact on the environment, your personal carbon footprint, your personal ethical footprint, whatever it's called. You know, let drop it in the comments and let me know. Um, and if there's anything else that I can be doing to help with my consumption, obviously let me know. Um, like I said, I'm hyper aware of it at the moment. I'm intensely thinking about it, but I'm really open to hearing like other people's perspectives on consumption and how to become more conscious with consumption. Um, so if there's any little things that you've noticed about the world and how it's spinning, you know, whether it's from manufacture of clothes to, I don't know, anything, music, sound, television, Netflix programs, document, whatever it is, like, yeah, comment below because I'll be I'll be interested to hear and, and just sort of like keep my mind pondering and, and thinking. So, yeah, that's me for today. Thanks for watching if you made it this far um, and I'll see you in the next video.